What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And we got another Neil Young reaction, this time to Chrome Dreams, brought to us by a friend, longtime supporter and patron of the channel, and Neil Young super fan, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out that Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. We could not do it without them. All right, we got a ton of Neil Young up. This is ending a three-month run of his albums that have been released in the last several years that were older, but just been released. So this sums that one up. But go look at our Neil Young playlist. We got all the 70s albums and some more up there. Most of them brought to us courtesy of Carl. A little bit about this album. Chrome Dreams is the 44th, that's insane, album by Neil Young. UK went to 56, US only to 186. It was first compiled as an acetate for consideration as an album for release all the way back in 1977. A copy of the acetate widely circulated as a bootleg in the decades prior to its release. This album was officially released on August 11th, 2023 to universal acclaim from critics. First compiled in the spring of 77, it's a showcase of songs that Young had recorded over the previous two years. It compiles songs from several different sessions with various collaborators and backing musicians. Too Far Gone, Homegrown, Like a Hurricane, Look Out for My Love were all recorded at various sessions at Young's Broken Arrow Ranch with Crazy Horse during the fall and winter after the release of Zuma. Of course, we have a reaction to that. And before the supporting tour of Europe and Japan in the spring of 76. The Great Powderfinger, Pocahontas, and Captain Kennedy all date from the August 1976 session featured on the 2017 album Hitchhiker, which is up. The album takes its name from a sketch David Briggs made on a studio tape reel. Young said what Chrome Dreams really was was a sketch that Briggs drew of a grill in front of a 55 Chrysler. And if you turned it on its end, it was this beautiful chick. I called it Chrome Dreams. The 2023 official release has the artwork almost identical to that description, but is credited to musician Ronnie Wood. Writing in The Guardian, Alex Petraeus opined that the album could have been Young's strongest album of the 70s. Now that is some high praise, boys and girls, but let's, let's find out what we think here. Metacritic 93 out of 100 and Pitchfork 8.5 out of 10, which is just a very, very, very high grade. So if you haven't been with this before, the music will not be in the video, but it will be at a Vimeo link below. Once again, I use Spotify, but Uncle Neil's not here, so these will be off his YouTube channel, the official versions of it. Let's jump into this thing. First song, we've, we've reacted to it before, a few times before. We got Pocahontas. You got Neil on guitar and vocal. This one was recorded at Indigo Ranch Recording Studio in Malibu in August of 1976 for Hitchhiker. Recording first released with additional overdubs on Russ Never Sleeps in 1979. He may have been inspired to write the song after reading Hart Crane's 1930 poem, The Bridge, which Young read in London in 1971. The 17th century indigenous heroine named Matoko, white name Pocahontas, is a central character in The Bridge. The lyrics primarily describe the massacre of an indigenous tribe by European colonizers. However, by the end of the song, the lyrics have jumped to modern times with a fictional meeting in the Astrodome between the narrator Pocahontas an indigenous rights activist actor, Marlon Brando, who famously turned down his Oscar and had a Native American woman go up and, and uh, accept it for him. If you want to know more about that, go watch the Hitchhiker Reaction. But I'm going to have the lyrics up, as always. Very important for Neil. Thanks again, Carl. All right, Pocahontas. Fantastic acoustic. Neil sounds great. It works just perfectly, which is Neil and the acoustic, because it's such a story. He just unfolds. At the very end, we end up with Marlon Brando by the fire. We'll sit and talk of Hollywood and the good things there for hire and the Astrome. Astrodome in the first TP, Marlon Brando, Pocahontas. I mean, it's kind of a surreal way to end this, but, you know, really breaks down kind of what the white man did to Native Americans, right? Just everything they did. They killed us in our TP. They cut our woman down. They might have left some babies crying on the ground. They massacred the buffalo, all these different things. Then he goes in verse four, right in the middle of the song, I wish I was a trapper. I'd give a thousand pills to sleep with Pocahontas. So he kind of digresses there. And then he goes to the last verse, you know, the Marlon Brando and all of that stuff. So Always interesting with Neil and a great song. Good way to start this out. Next up, we have a song that's over seven minutes long, Will to Love. Neil's on guitars, vocals, organ, piano, vibraphone, and drums. Recorded at Broken Arrow Ranch in April of 1976 with overdubs at Indigo Ranch in December of 76. Recording first released on American Stars and Bars in 1977, which, of course, we have a review up of, but I don't really remember this song. Young claims to have never sung the song again after the initial recording. He stated he's unable to sing it again since he can't remember the melody since all the verses came out differently. I do remember that back in the day from my research. The singer imagines himself to be a salmon swimming upstream to mate and struggling to survive. He sings that I'm a harpoon dodger. I can't, won't be tamed. 
The salmon in the song determined to reach the spawning place has been interpreted as a metaphor for the desire and loneliness associated with the will to love or for young, Young's own desires and dreams. The fish with its will to love suggests that love is mysterious and spiritual with lines such as it's like something from up above. Young himself said of the song that it might be one of the greatest records I ever made. Well, that is a lot of acclaim. Surely I love that song uh, whenever I heard it back in the day because it's fantastic. It's so interesting with all the different sounds going on. You know, he played everything as I ran down at the start of this, but just really, really dense arrangement wise, but not enough to like, it's still subtle. There's a lot more going on, obviously, than like in Pocahontas, right? I mean, one of those kind of this cracking sound, it was almost like I just put this on this recording or did something happen around? I kind of wanted to pull my headphone off for a second and, and see what's going on. But to to shape up like the fractured relationship in this manner, right, with the fish. But, uh, you know, he, it didn't work out with this girl. And then I, I like verse two, very self-aware, right? I can be like a fire in the night, always warm and giving off light. But there comes a time when I shine too bright. Oh, I'm a fire in the night. And now my fins are in the air and my belly scraping on the rocks. I still think someone really cares and I'll keep swimming till I stop. So he's just going to keep going. And then he talks about being a singer on the stage in verse three and kind of getting into that. And then the chorus follows after every verse, which doesn't happen a lot of Neil's songs, right? And then in verse five, it kind of all comes to an end and you know it's come to an end. Baby, if I see boredom in your eyes, I'll know my rivers run dry, but I won't turn back with that lonely tide. I bought that ticket and I'll take that ride. If we meet along the way, Please sway beside me. Let us sway together, our tails together, and our fins and mine will leave this water. And let our scales shine in the sun above and the sky below, so all the water on earth will know. And in the outro, it's only been my dream that wa la la to live with one who wasn't there. So uh, biting words at the end. Now we go to Star of Bethlehem. We got Neil on guitar, vocal, and harmonica. The great Ben Keith on dobro and vocal. Tim Drummond on bass. Carl T. Hemmel on drums. And the great Amy Lou Harris on vocal, recorded at Quadraphonic Sonic Studios in Nashville in December of 1974 for Homegrown. Recording first released on American Stars and Bars in 1977. The earliest recording was recorded at the end of 74 and intended to be the closing track of Homegrown, an abandoned album eventually released in 2020 and one I put up on the channel just a couple months ago. All right, Star of Bethlehem. Just super enjoyed the vast arrangement on that, right? The dobro, the drumming, Emmy Lutus coming in and almost a, a staggered chorus and harmony, not exactly right on. So, and I thought Neil's voice, it just has that tone to it in this song. So I think that's, that's what makes this star, this uh, song shine, Star of Bethlehem. Next up, we have the classic Like a Hurricane. We got Neil on guitar and vocal. Pancho Samprito was a string man, vocals, and then Billy Talbot on bass, Ralph Molina on drums and vocal. Recorded at Broken Arrow Ranch in November of 75. Vocal overdubs in January of 76. Once again, first released on American Stars and Bars in 1977. There is a story floating around out there that Neil wrote the song in July of 75 with the help of his friend and LaHonda neighbor Taylor Phelps in the back of his DeSoto Suburban during a time when Young was unable to sing because of an operation on the old vocal cords. In a 2004 interview, Neil discusses the insane conditions of how the song came to be. Rested from the turmoil of a cocaine-fueled night while his vocal cords were in poor health. He said, quote, we were all really high, effed up, been out partying, rode it sitting up at Vista Point on Skyline, supposed to be the highest point in San Mateo County, which was appropriate. I wrote it when I couldn't sing. I was on voice rest. It was nuts. I was whistling it. I wrote a lot of songs when I couldn't talk. That's some talent right there. All right, Like a Hurricane. That song is just absolutely epic. I haven't heard that song in a long time. I mean, obviously the guitar work by Neil on this song is just next level. Like, his best ever, it can't be much better, right? I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, the whole song itself is fantastic, but that guitar work, and I'm not always a fan of long outros or codas or instrumental work. I'm not always a fan of that if it seems kind of, I don't know, man, overindulgence, but this is fantastic. The song itself is great. Um, the songwriting is nice, but it's more just the arrangement and just the tone of it all, but I mean, like a Hurricane is hard to beat, man. It's hard to beat. It can be beat in Neil's catalog, which tells you something about how good his catalog is. Next up, we got Too Far Gone, Neil on guitar and vocal, and Pancho San, San Pedro on mandolin. Recorded at Broken Arrow Ranch in September of 75. First release on Neil Young's Archives, Volume 2, 1972 to 1976. 
back in 2020, first appeared on Freedom in 1989. And on this, Poncho was playing a 1917 vandal. Too far gone. The only thing I didn't like about that song was too short, right? It was about two minutes, 40 seconds. That song was fantastic. Neil's vocals on there with the mandolin. I don't know, man. It's like some sort of perfect combination. Like, you know, basically it, it, he loves this girl or he thinks he loves her by the next morning. He wants to marry her, but he's wondering if he's too far gone. I don't know if he's too far gone in love with her or too far gone from the drugs and alcohol, right? For To make it work. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, that was incredible. Next up, we have Hold Back to Tears. Neil's on guitar, keyboard, percussion, and vocal. Quarter Indigo Ranch in February of 77. This recording is previously unreleased, but the song first appeared on American Stars and Bars in 77. The acoustic solo performance of this one has additional lyrics not found on the overall band recording on American Stars and Bars. Hold Back to Tears. I see here one of the songs they dropped before the album came out as kind of a teaser. I think it's Nicolette Larson on the backing, but I can't get an absolute... A positive on that from everything that I was looking at, but I think that's who's on there. But it adds a nice texture to this. Um, so a really good song. I mean, hold back the tears. Like there's either been a divorce or a breakup, whatever it is, and the the protagonist doesn't really even want to go there again, right? Because the hurt isn't worth it. So that that's kind of what Neil's doing there. And then you know, verse three, two lion fools, and then four crying eyes, counting on one another to survive. Crazy love must surely have its pain when getting up means going down again. Hold back the tears that you've been crying. Push off the fears when they come around. Hold back the tears and keep on trying. Just around the next corner may be waiting your true love. But some of us, when we get really hurt, we just never jump back into that situation again for self-preservation. So a really good song. Next up's Homegrown. We've got Neil on guitar and vocal. Poncho San Pedro on guitars and vocals. Billy Talbot on bass. Ralph Molina on drums and vocals. Some of the usual suspects. Recorded Broken Arrow Ranch in November of 75. First appeared on American Stars and Bars in 1977. It was obviously on Homegrown, which I put up a few months ago. It's a quick one, Homegrown. I like the sound too. It has a different sound, almost like a little bit of a harvest sound, but I mean, obviously harder on the musicianship there, but kind of the, the tone of it. I like it fine. I mean, it almost sounds like an incomplete song to me, right? I mean, there's not much to it too when you look at a lot of repetitive verse action, which Neil doesn't do a ton of, but I mean, it's still a really good song. Still a really good song. Being a good song. So next up, we got Captain Kennedy recorded at Indigo Ranch recording studios in Malibu in August of 76 for Hitchhiker. First appeared on Hawks and Doves. We got a review of that up in 1980. Another short song like Homegrown, except this one definitely feels complete. I mean, quite, quite the story. And uh, this guy is, is sailing out. Captain Kennedy is his dad and Captain Kennedy, the, the Germans got him in World War II. And so he spent I think his whole life, because he saw him in 71. He was still working, trying to trying to redeem himself as the captain of the seas. And this guy's headed off to war. I'm going to presume Vietnam because it's in the early 70s. But uh, he draws you in. Got that little Neil vocal inflection. This kind of draws you into the story with the acoustic and just unfolds you through it. Like the song just goes that quick because you're just hanging on his every word. A, a real gift that Neil has. Some others have it, but not, not many have it. Next up, we have String Man. Neil's on piano, guitar, and vocal. Recorded at Hammersmith Apollo, London, March 31st of 1976 with overdubs at CBS Studios in London the next day. First released on Neil Young Archives, Volume 2, 1972 through 76 in 2020. First appeared on Unplugged, MTV Unplugged in 1993. It's written for Jack Nitschke and is presented as a performance from Young's 1976 European tour with slight studio overdubs, as I mentioned. Now, one thing I will say about this Neil Young Archives, Volume 2, because we had another song from it, I was looking at this, came out in 2020. Uh, it's insane. It's 132 songs. So buckle up, boys and girls, if you're doing that bad boy in one city. String, man, that performance was absolutely incredible. Remember, that was live. So a little bit of studio overdubs here. That was live and just so pulled you in the piano this time. Neil playing it and just, just pulling you in. Um, some people say his songs also could be for Stephen Stills. But once again, starts with a chorus. You know, it's pretty unique with Neil that he starts a lot of his songs with the chorus. And I reference it when I come across other songs on Reactions that start with the chorus because nobody does it better than Neil. He understands how to implement that in there and pull you into the song from the very start. Because it starts out with the chorus. You can say the soul is gone and the feeling is just not there. Not like it was so long ago. And then he just kind of unfolds this thing of things taken away. Things that were great, but then things taken away. You know, when we get the string man in verse two. I'm singing for the string man who lately lost his wife. There's no dearer friend of mine than I know in his life. On his shoulder rests the violin for his head where chaos reigns, but his heart can't find a simple way to live with all those things. Like it's 
amazing. Like, and then the outro, all those things, all those strings to pull. He's a string man. All those things. Just fantastic. All right, we still got three songs left. We got Sedan Delivery. Neil's on guitar and vocal. Poncho's on guitar. Billy Talbot's on bass and vocal. Of course, Ralph Molina on drums and vocals. So that means it's recorded at his house this one May of 75 for the Zuma album. This recording was previously unreleased, but it first appears on Russ Never Sleeps in 1979. You know, boys and girls, fill in the lines. We got a review for that. It was originally recorded during the Zuma sessions in 75. It has a slower pace, this one does, than the Russ Never Sleeps take and contains an additional verse. As with Powderfinger and another Chrome Dream song, Captain Kennedy, it was offered to Leonard Skinner for them to possibly include on their Street Survivors album, but they also ultimately pass on all of them. The lyrics go through a number of variant scenes. The narrator starts by singing about beating a woman with varicose veins in a game of pool. He then sings about visiting the dentist, seeing a movie about Caesar and Cleopatra, and delivering chemicals to a mad scientist. Rolling Stone Magazine interprets the song as being the opposite of Young's earlier song, Tonight's the Night, and that in Tonight's the Night, a working man is destroyed by drugs. While in Sedan Delivery, the narrator is a working man whose job is to distribute drugs. All right, let's go. Sedan Delivery. The song does weave a nice story, but... I think the star of this is obviously the arrangement. I mean, you got Neo and Poncho. I don't know which one's killing the guitar. Maybe both of them. But the the arrangement actually adds to the drama of the song as, as Neo speeds it up, right? In verse uh, in verse five, he's making another delivery of chemicals and sacred roots. And it starts to like, the, the guitar even gets faster and the arrangement speeds up. So uh, I, I like it. I'll hold what you have to give me, but I'll use what I have to use. The lasers are in the lab. The old man is dressed in white clothes. Everybody says he's mad. No one knows the things he knows. Like, he's making the drugs, boys and girls. So, uh, a really good one. Shows you that Neil can do both, right? Pull you in with the acoustic or or the piano and just his voice or fire up these arrangements. So, got two songs left. Next up, we got Powderfinger, guitar and vocal by Neil. Quarter to Indigo Ranch recorded in studios Malibu in 8 11 of 76 for Hitchhiker. First released on Hitchhiker in 2017. As I said, I just put that up a couple months ago. The song was first released on Russ Never Sleeps in 79. We have a review of that up. A 2014 Rolling Stone special issue on Neil ranked it as his best song ever. Where's our posthumous narration of a young man who attempts to protect his family gets an approaching gunboat. He realizes that all the older men are unavailable, leaving him to, quote, do the thinking. After initial indecision, he eventually takes action. He's ultimately killed. He describes his death with the gruesome line, my face splashed in the sky. Once about fading away, echo the line, it's better to burn out than to fade away, which young Sings on the opening of My My Hey Hey, Out of the Blue, and uh, famously tied to Kurt Cobain. All right, Powderfinger. I mean, that song is absolutely fantastic. The emotive part of Neil's voice there, you just feel it in the tone, right? I mean, he's never going to just go way outside of his range to try to like hammer something. But you just feel it. The story just enthralls you. It's just fantastic, man. And you just feel him almost telling you, you know, with emotion and matter of fact of like kind of this is how it this is how it played out, man. It's kind of how it had to go. It wasn't going to go any other way. Um, I don't know if it's his greatest song because you know what? It's funny, like with Neil and with singer songwriters, sometimes it's hard for me to figure out what I think their favorite song is. It's kind of one of those things where, you know, you either love them or you don't. And if you love them, it's like you love most of their songs, especially during this period in the 70s. Neil, Neil branches out to some interesting stuff in the 80s, but we'll leave that there. But uh yeah, I mean, the song could be his greatest song. It's up there. All right, we're going to finish this off with Look Out For My Love. Neil on guitar, Poncho on guitar, Talbot on bass and vocals, and of course, Ralph Molina on drums and vocals. Recorded at Broken Arrow Ranch, January 20th, 1976. Overdubs at CBS Studios three months later, April Fool's Day, 76, to CBS Studios in London. First released on Comes a Time in 1978. All right, Look Out For My Love. I thought that was a good song, but... I think it's one of the weakest songs on this album. And that's no shade at this song. Uh, I wish they would have just finished with Powderfinger, right? On that kind of high, but maybe they didn't want to finish on that kind of high, but not a bad song at all. I mean, great instrumentation, some nice harmonies on there, good guitar work, you know. I mean, it fits in with the album, but man, uh, so many other high notes on this album, which is going to bring me to my favorite tracks. I mean... I have one honorable mention and a bunch of faves. I mean, it could have been, I almost didn't even pick because so many songs are so good. But honorable mention, Captain Kennedy. Faves are going to be Will to Love, Like a Hurricane, Too Far Gone, String Man, and Powderfinger. Now we'll get to my overall score. Now, I mean, this is an album that's thrown together, not thrown together, but you know what I'm saying, from like a lot of different fantastic songs. Uh, you know, at the start, one of the critics said this could have been his best album of the 70s if it was released. 
I think it definitely would have been his best album of the 70s if it was released. I like all his albums. There's no one album of his that just stands out for me as being absolutely fantastic, um, which is not bad, but he's just putting out so many albums. Every one of his albums is really good. I just don't hold out any one of them as being fantastic until this one. Uh, this is this is unreal. Like I said, it's basically a greatest hits compilation with a few other things thrown in here. Uh, I'm going to be at a sky high 9.0. I mean, I probably might even go higher on future listens, but this is fantastic. This is the magnum opus in his catalog, uh, in, in my opinion. But let me know below in the comments, is this his best album? What is his best album? Um, so let me know your thoughts down there. Thanks again to Carl for bringing this one. Until next time, guys, I will see you.